Listen to Treasure Island by Robert Louis Stevenson, Level A2, Oxford Reading University. Part 2. You will find Part 1 here and in the description. Jim agreed, and they went to the place where the boat was hidden. They were walking through the dark forest when suddenly gunshots sounded in the distance. There is a fight, Jim shouted, and they ran as fast as they could. They soon noticed the British flag over the trees. Those are your friends, Ben Gunn said, pointing to the flag. But Jim wasn't that sure. And what if they are the Pirates of Silver, he asked. No, it is impossible. The pirate's flag is black. True pirates could never raise any other flag, he explained. There is a camp that Flint built many years ago. I guess your friends have won the fight and settled in the camp. Then let us join them, Jim said, pulling Ben Gunn by the arm. No, Jim, I am not stupid, the man refused. I will leave you, and when the time comes, we will meet again, he said, and was gone. There was another gunshot. Jim fell to the ground and covered his head with his hands. He noticed a black pirate flag at the top of the Hispaniola. On land, not far from Jim's friends, several pirates also set up camp. They laughed and sang songs and drank rum. Deep into the night, Jim quietly walked up to his friend's camp. They were happy to see him alive and unhurt. But what are you doing here? Jim asked. We became worried about you after you left with the pirates, the captain explained. So we decided to leave the ship as well. We studied Flint's map before, so we knew about the camp. Then, several pirates took over the Hispaniola. They attacked us many times, shooting from both sea and land, but we managed to fight back. Jim told the captain about Ben Gunn. Well, we shall find out later if this man appears to be of use. Go to bed. Tomorrow is going to be an important day, the captain said. English courses, famous audiobooks for all levels, word games, and rating charts to keep you motivated, all in one place. The Ewa app. Don't just learn English, enjoy it. Check out appewa.com right now. 7. Early in the morning, Jim woke up to a loud shout. It is silver, with a white flag. Keep guard, men, Captain Smollett ordered. Protect the camp. Silver walked up close to the camp. Captain Silver is here to make a deal, he said loudly. Captain Silver, Smollett laughed. I have heard of no such man. But you have run away. Somebody had to take on the role, Silver replied. What is it that you want? Smollett asked in a serious voice. We want the treasure, and we will have it, Silver said. I know you have Flint's map. Give it to us, and we will not attack you again. If you agree, my men will take the treasure, and we will return to the Hispaniola together. If you refuse, you will stay here forever and die a terrible death. Captain Smollett gave him an angry look. Now listen to me, Silver, he began. I refuse your offer, and I promise you that I, Alexander Smollett, will make sure to deliver you to prison. You and all your terrible, bloodthirsty pirates. You stupid man, Silver cried, his eyes burning with fire. 
We will destroy you, he shouted, and left. The captain didn't waste a minute. Quick, prepare to fight, he ordered. Hunter, take up a position against the wall. Joyce, protect the other side. Squire and Gray, you shoot better than any of us. Take guard. Jim, Doctor and I will help the others and attack with knives. The men looked hard into the distance, but all was still. There was no sign of pirates. Suddenly, Joyce's sharp eye caught a movement in the forest, and he fired. Immediately, the pirates fell on the camp from all sides like a storm at sea. They shot from water and land and climbed inside the camp. But the captain's men fought angrily too. Several pirates were killed, and the rest ran away. The captain lost men as well. Joyce lay on the ground with his head shot through, and Hunter was dead too. The captain himself was shot in the stomach. We have killed five men, Squire Trelawney reported. Not bad, the captain said. Now there are nine of them left, against the four of us. Eight. After that bloody fight, the captain and his men rested at the camp. Meanwhile, Dr. Livesey went to the forest to see Ben Gunn. It was so hot that Jim couldn't think straight. He was sick of all the blood and dead bodies at the camp. Suddenly, a crazy idea crossed his mind. I shall find Ben Gunn's boat he decided. In the evening, he took his gun and quietly left the camp, making sure that nobody noticed him. It was already deep into the night when he discovered the boat under a huge rock at the beach. It appeared surprisingly light. Jim pulled it to the water and sailed toward the Hispaniola. The pirates on land sat at the fire, singing old songs and drinking rum. As he came close to the ship, he heard two voices. One belonged to Israel Hands. Israel and his friend were drunk. Soon they began arguing loudly and ended up fighting and hitting each other hard. Good, they are so busy with each other that they won't notice me, Jim thought. He came closer to the thick anchor rope and cut it with a knife. The wind caught the ship immediately and blew it from side to side. Jim's little boat couldn't manage the waves. Soon he lost energy. His whole body was in pain. He fell into a heavy sleep at the bottom of the boat. In the morning, Jim found himself sailing somewhere near the island. Looking around, he noticed the Hispaniola, half a mile away. With great difficulty, he managed to sail up to the ship and climb it. On board, he found both pirates. One of them could never be dangerous anymore, as he was dead. He lay on his back with his eyes wide open. A knife was in his stomach. Israel Han sat next to him, nearly dead. His leg was badly injured. Jim felt sorry for the old pirate. When the man came to his senses, Jim told him, Well, Mr. Hans, I am your captain now. This is my first order. Remove that awful black flag from the top of my ship. God save the king! Down with Captain Silver! The boy shouted as the flag was moving slowly down. I guess, Captain. Captain Hawkins, Hans said with some difficulty, that you wish to return to the island. But you have no idea how to deal with a huge ship. I will give you a hand. But will you bring me... 
What was it? Oh, yes. Will you be so kind as to bring me something to drink? Jim noticed that the man hid a knife behind his back. He is going to kill me and take over the ship, the boy thought. I must keep a close eye on him. He brought the man a bottle of rum and stood behind the captain's wheel. The hot wind blew in his face, and he enjoyed the beautiful nature around him. Then he understood that he had to be more careful. But it was too late. Israel Hands jumped to his feet and put a sharp knife against Jim's neck. The boy shouted and pulled out his gun. Mark my words, Mr. Hands, he said with a shaking voice. If you move, I will shoot you in the head, and you will be as dead as the pirate you killed yesterday. Israel raised his hands. All right, boy. I may be an old sea dog, but when a man points a gun at me, I will only ask him not to take my life. Jim felt sorry for the man. Just as he put his gun down, Hans threw his knife at him. It went through Jim's shoulder and deep into the wooden board behind him. Crying out in pain, Jim fired his gun. Hans didn't make a single sound. His dead body fell off the board and disappeared under the dark water. 9. Fortunately, Jim's injury wasn't serious. The boy was able to stand the pain and pulled the knife out. At night, he delivered the Hispaniola to the beach and returned to the camp. What will my friends say when they discover the ship in the morning? He thought to himself, holding back laughter. He carefully made his way past the sleeping men in the dark. Suddenly, a strong hand caught hold of his leg. Who is there? Silver's voice asked angrily. The pirates have taken over the camp, Jim realized. But it was too late. Dick, give us a little light. Well, if it isn't Jim Hawkins... Silver said, laughing. Jim's heart raced. You know, Jim, Dr. Livesey is very angry with you, Silver continued, shaking Jim's hand. Your dear friends have left you alone. At least they are safe, Jim thought, and he grew more confident. You may believe, John Silver, he began, that you have won the game. But you are wrong. You lost your ship and your men, and your treasure too. It is I, Jim Hawkins, who killed the pirates on the ship. Only I know where the Hispaniola lies now. You have nowhere to run, and on my honor I promise to bring you back to England where you will hang. I will kill you, one of the pirates shouted. He jumped to his feet and took a knife. Enough, Tom Morgan, Silver said. Listen to your captain. Touch this boy, and you will have to deal with me. Another pirate raised his voice. Tom is right. Enough of you, Silver. The men were about to get into a cruel fight, but a young pirate stood between them. I am sorry, Captain, he said. But you really break many of our rules, and the crew isn't too happy. But one rule even you cannot break. We will have a discussion, and decide if we wish to have you as our captain any more. At these words, the pirates left the camp. Silver and Jim were left alone. Jim, listen to me. Silver said with a wide, warm smile on his face. I was wrong. I never won the game. 
Without my ship, there is no game. These terrible men want to kill us both and steal the treasure, but we can still run away. I have one request. If you help me, I will make sure you return to your friends safely. What do you want? Jim asked. Promise me that when we return to England, I won't be hanged. Jim was quiet for some time, looking hard at the pirate. He felt sorry for him. I just don't understand why Dr. Livesey has given me the map, Silver said suddenly. He took Flint's map out of his pocket and showed it to Jim. Before Jim could say anything, the pirates returned. One of them gave Silver a black piece of paper. On the other side of the paper was a note. We refuse to serve you as captain, John Silver, he said. Silver read the note and laughed. And how are you going to find the treasure without this? he asked raising Flint's map high above his head. I recognize Flint's sign. The map is real, one pirate cried. John Silver, you are our captain, they repeated as one. 10. The next morning, Jim woke up to a loud shout. Get up, Dr. Livesey is coming. He came at Silver's request to look at the sick and the injured. We have a surprise for you today, Doctor, Silver laughed. Little Jim is back. When Dr. Livesey finished with the pirates, Silver allowed him to talk to Jim. Doctor, I am terribly sorry that I have left you at such a hard time, Jim cried when they were left alone. But I managed to steal the Hispaniola. I will lead you to the ship. The ship? Dr. Livesey cried. Ah, oh, dear Jim, you have saved our lives again. First you uncovered the pirate's terrible plan, then you found Ben Gunn, and now you have stolen the ship. I was lucky, Doctor, Jim said, smiling. Let's run away, Jim. Let's go to our camp, Dr. Livesey suggested. I cannot do that, sir. I gave Silver a promise to stay here, the boy replied. Silver will take care of you, Jim, but I promise that soon we will come for you, Dr. Livesey said, and left. At the camp, Jim found the pirate studying Flint's map. The map says that the treasure lies under a tall tree, one of the pirates said. And let's find it, Silver ordered, and they set off at once. 11. The pirates and the boy made their way through the forest. They followed all the signs and instructions from Flint's map. Under a tall tree, they found bones of a dead man. Some pirates recognized a member of Flint's crew by his clothes. His hands were tied in a strange manner. Silver guessed that they showed the way to the treasure. The pirates grew scared when they saw the bones. Silver was angry with them. It is just a dead man, he cried. There is nothing to fear. Move! Jim thought to himself, We are very close. All he wants is to take the treasure kill every last one of his men, and escape with the money. Soon they reached the spot marked with a red cross on Flint's map. It was a deep hole in the ground, but no treasure was at the bottom. It was empty. Somebody has been here before us, Jim understood. But the pirates weren't so smart. They threw themselves into the hole digging it with their hands and shouting. Silver, however, also realized that it was too late. Keep your gun ready, he said quietly to Jim. 
one of the men picked something up from the ground. It was the only gold coin that was left of the treasure. Silver, you lied to us again, he shouted. Where is our money? The pirate jumped to his feet and drew his gun. At that very moment, a bullet came from the forest and shot through his head. Dr. Livesey and Ben Gunn came just in time to save Jim. Before the pirates could realize the danger, they were killed. 12. Dr. Livesey and Ben Gunn take Jim and Silver to their camp. They find out that Ben found and took all of Flint's treasure long ago. That evening, everyone enjoys a delicious dinner and drinks excellent rum. Jim is happy that his friends are alive and that their dangerous adventure is ended. Silver is among them, too. He acts as the kind, good-natured cook again laughing and drinking and singing with everyone. The following day, they carry all the treasure to the Hispaniola and sail away from Treasure Island. In America, they stop to hire a new crew. While the captain was busy searching for seamen, Dr. Livesey and Squire Trelawney took Jim to town and enjoyed themselves at restaurants and inns when they returned to the Hispaniola, they found Ben Gunn crying loudly. I am sorry, my friends, he fell to his knees. John Silver has escaped. No, I was the one who helped him get into the boat. I was afraid that we were all in danger while he was around. He took a small bag of Flint's money with him, too. Well, it is... Quite a low price to pay for breaking free from that terrible man, Captain Smollett said, laughing. With a new crew, the ship arrived safely in Bristol. The friends shared Flint's treasure fairly. And so Jim's amazing adventure came to an end. Later, he remembered it many times and thought a lot about the fate of John Silver. One thing he knew for sure... He never wanted to return to Treasure Island again. Send this story to a friend who likes to practice English. And now, listen to another English audiobook.